Hello, everyone, and welcome to Petite to Queen's Claim Your Career Crown podcast. I'm your host, Lynn, and today I'm joined by our wonderful guest, Marla Diane. And today we're going to be talking about how to make sure your brand has social responsibility. And to talk about this very important um, subject, I am so thrilled to have Marla here today. And I want to tell you a little bit about her. And, and her bio is just so tremendous. Pardon me if I read some notes for, for, from time to time. She, uh, Marla is an international success coach and business strategist for creatives. With over 30 combined years of t- mentoring, uh, entrepreneurship, personal growth, professional development, coaching, training, entertainment, PR, and talent management, and personal branding. Marla embodies authenticity, empowerment, vulnerability, and creativity. And with over 25 plus years as a creative entrepreneur of two businesses, which I cannot imagine (laughs) running two businesses, Marla imparts intuitive and practical wisdoms to her audience. She is known for being an advocate and transformational coach in the area of wealth consciousness and your money relationship to upgrade your worth and Mm -hmm. dignity. Money habits, behaviors, and mindset are deeply rooted, requiring a recalibration in order to create better results. Marla intuitively uses the transformation of your money relationship as a catalyst to change in all parts of your life. So welcome, Marla. We are so thrilled to have you here today. Thank you. I couldn't have said it better myself. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is... (laughs) I appreciate your reading this. Well, you know, um, I'd love to say that I memorized all the intros, but, you know, (laughs) that's my own own humility square for the day. Um, And I do want to welcome you and everyone who's joining us, and especially those of you who are joining us for that very first time. You know, don't miss out on a single episode by subscribing to Claim Your Career Crown wherever you get your podcasts. And if you love what we're doing and love the show, please leave us a five-star review. We'd be very grateful. Okay, so Marla, let's sort of dive in because this is just such a fascinating um, topic that we're going to be coming, covering along with your background. And I'd love to hear about your journey to becoming a coach and business strategist. Yes, sure, of course. And and just to, to clarify, and you'll, you're, you're going to hear this in my story, I'm not running two businesses at the same time. Okay. <laughs> well, because I was going like, wow. <laughs> No, <laughs> not in this lifetime. Sorry. Um, no, it's the last 25 years. It's two businesses, one and then the, the followed with the coaching. So this, here's the, the details and how that happened. Um, so, yeah, my journey to to become a coach, which was back in 2008. So it's 13 years that I've been in this success coach, business strategist um, role is I spent 20 really fun dynamic years in the entertainment industry as a publicist. And um, my clients were celebrities and visual and performing artists. And it was so, so well suited for me. Um, I have a degree in, 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 excuse me, in PR journalism. Um, I'm a writer, so it was like I monetized my love of writing in the entertainment industry. And um, it was absolutely fabulous until it wasn't. (laughs) In other words, until about the 20-year mark, 2016, 2017, I started to get this, um, I call it a divine discontent. And I wasn't passionate anymore about the whole PR thing and pitching media and getting clients in the media and being behind the scenes. There was this intuitive message that said, it's time for you to play a bigger game, something more meaningful. And the fact that I had already loved, you know, motivation and inspiration and universal law and law of attraction, all of that just kind of came to the surface. And at the same time of my intuitive message, everything was changing in the world. 
So yeah. if you remember back in 2016, everyone was like, what is social media? What's a blog? Right, everything started to move online. And I was fascinated by that. So the bottom line was, is I had to reinvent myself and it was perfect timing because I was ready, right? Spiritually, I was ready for this change. So it took about a year or so of discovery and one day I was on the, uh, I was on somebody's teleclass. It was a, a woman business, you know, coach. And I was still in, in PR at the time and, but looking, right, what was going to be the next step. And she had a guest uh, on her, on her show and it sparked in me. And I went, no, wait a minute. You've been going to Tony Robbins. You've been going to Jack Canfield. You've been a student of both, right? You've been doing this motivation thing. And he explained in the teleclass his story and what he did as, as this kind of multi-million dollar coach. And I went, okay, so hold on a minute. So I can combine everything I know and love in a business, right, this way? So anyway, I ended up finding a mentor. And in May of 2008, I took my expertise in personal branding, right? That's what I was doing in PR. And uh, since social media was becoming the new PR, I was already an expert in this. I just needed to learn how to show up online and how to teach entrepreneurs, which was my chosen market, how to turn themselves into a brand and monetize it online. So I learned that while I had my 20 years of experience and I birthed Embrace Your Spotlight. Oh, that was right. my first my first iteration of my coaching business I was teaching entrepreneurs something that nobody knew how to do. So I was kind of one of the first few um, handful of, of experts that were showing people how to monetize Facebook, how to use it as a publicity channel and how to build your business that way. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, you really were blazing the trail there. Oh. That's <laughs> It felt like that because there were definitely <laughs> not that many people. And, you know, my business took off pretty quickly because people were like, you know how to use Facebook? You know how to do this for business? I said, yes, of course. Sign me up. What do you got? You know, how do you do this? And, um, yeah. And so five years into it, when everyone else decided to do it, that's when I started moving into more of the business coaching um, and, uh, and then got certified to be a money coach and how to transform your relationship with money. So I'm purely business coaching as well as spirituality, life, um, and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It, it's all interconnected. And, uh, I think that's, what's so important. You know, it's not just a s single thing in the sense of, um, you know, your money, there's all the other aspects of your life that have to be integrated into that, including what you're just saying. And I think that sort of, you know, life of come back around uh, circle, it's also the things that you're passionate about yeah. and that you care deeply about. And so you and I talked just briefly before the show about how important social responsibility is yeah. uh, for all of us as, as individuals and also as for our businesses. And I'd love to have you sort of expand on that and why um, and is that so critical and what does social responsibility mean in terms of your brand, either for yeah. you know your personal brand or for your business? Yeah, sure. Oh my gosh. Well, and to, to preface all this, I have always been of the, it's one of my values, and I've always been of the mindset how important it is to give back. Right? Yeah. is to be involved with a cause greater than yourself, right? Something that really um, enhances humanity in any way, right? And, and obviously, you and I have chosen a business that is about enhancing humanity through our coaching, right? Through our love of, of seeing people succeed. So, yeah, social responsibility was a real, it's a natural for me on a couple levels. One is when I was in PR, it's one of the, as long as it's authentic, and I know we'll, we'll cover that in a, in a little bit, but in PR, it's one of the best, if you will, news angles, right, to 
attach yourself to, right, as well as a brand, is because what does it do is it positions you as a real, authentic, compassionate human being that cares about others, right? And what that does is that creates, and this is the, the main strategy about brand, it creates the know, like, and trust factor, right? When your audience on social media, wherever it is that you are in your newsletters and all of the above, when they're able to see you involved, right, with a nonprofit that's attached to your brand as long as it's aligned with your values, so it's authentic, right. You have an immediate connection with that person, right? And that's what this is about. It's relationship marketing, but even more so it's about you presenting to be a very authentic brand, personal brand about things other than just business, <laughs> right? And how you can, can give back. Um, in fact, um, one of the... This is a, a great example of what's happened in my own business just in the last six months. As I said, I always have some uh, a nonprofit that I attach myself and my business to, and I even have it on my website. There's a tab that says give back, and you go to it and you'll see the, the various um, you know, causes that I support. Anyway, I did a rebrand. In fact, any minute today or tomorrow, the rebrand will be launched. So mm -hmm. Thank you. Pretty excited about that. And um, while I was last year in the process of allowing ideas to come to me, being in what I call a receiving mode, not this masculine, massive action, hurry up, what do I got to do mode? What I wanted to do was, okay, how do I want my brand to be this, this time around? Um, and it's about the fourth time in 13 years I've rebranded because you have to, you evolve as a brand as you yeah. know. Yeah. And so the pandemic led to me and thousands of others to really examine our lives, right? Yes. Examine who we are. And I did that uh, sometime in March or April. I went, okay, yeah, lots have changed on, on the inside because of what happened with the pandemic. Long story short, I put on my vision board as I was getting ideas and it took about four months. This was not a rushed process. And I put on my vision board, I want a youth arts oriented organization. I don't know where it was gonna come from um, to be part of my brand because a lot of my rebrand was about the creativity of who I am, where I'm a creative who's a coach rather than a coach that's creative. Yeah. And that's what I used to be as a co uh, my brand was, I was a coach that was with a creative background of 25, 30 years. I wanted to flip that because it was really more authentic to who I am. I'm a creative that coaches, right? And coaches, creatives and entrepreneurs. All right. So the youth arts organization put that on my vision board. And about two, three weeks later, I'm looking through one of our local magazines and there's this full page ad for South Bay Artists Collective. All and right. I've been 13 years. And I went, what is that? And why haven't I known about this? <laughs> right? Anyway, I'm reading through it, went to their website and I went, ah, thanks universe. That's it. And so I reached out to them and within probably two hours, I get a text from the founder and said, we need to talk. <laughs> we need to talk. And that then became my new uh, cause. And what it is, the, the Artist Collective, um, Raphael McMaster created for teens, and this is remarkable because we all know what's going on today with our teens and their mental health, Yes, uh, is through artist expression and body, mind, spirit teach, uh, uh, um, classes teaching them, you know, confidence, teaching them um, expression, right? Teaching them mindfulness and yoga and, you know, um, consciousness, right? All of that. And then as well, artist expression. And it's, a, it's healed so many of these, these teens and the parents' responses over the last five years that they've been in operation, it's, it's remarkable absolutely remarkable. So I'm in the right place. I chose that 
because it matched my personal values, my vision, and what I know is from my heart. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And I, I, I think that's such a beautiful story and you're right, how the universe aligned. Um, but I want to sort of tap into maybe the negative Nellies or, or negative Neds out there who, who don't really quite see that. And, um, you know, and this is a rhetorical cause you and I both passionately, uh, uh, believe that companies should concern themselves with social responsibility. But for mm -hmm. those who are shaking their heads and the, they don't quite get it, um, you know, and, and taking this a, a way that it's, it's not about what's morally right, you know, or wrong. Um, why um, should uh, companies um, uh, participate in this type of uh, social responsibility activity? And, you know, will, what kind of benefits or direct benefits will they, because, you know, a lot of, for some of those negative Neds and negative Nellies, they're going to go like, well, what's in it for me um, besides just doing the right thing? But what kind of benefits can they realize um, when they do the right thing? Yeah, sure. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> you know, it's an interesting question that that, you know, when you when you phrase negative Nellies, um, the best thing to open your heart is to give back. Yeah. The best thing to change your life on any level and to take the focus off of you and put it on something greater than your own life is that. So that uh, over and above the monetary, which I'll get to in a moment, is the main reason for doing it. It's like, is there something going on in your life that you could use some healing, right? That you could use some change transformation. Well, one of the ways to do that through business is to give back. <laughs> it's to associate, attach yourself, right? Especially our, you know, the perception and the positioning of your brand is about impact, right? And the benefits that come out of that, as I mentioned just a moment ago, you know, the benefits is you reaching people you normally wouldn't reach on social media because they happen to see your picture of you with who, whatever cause it is that you're spending time with, right? Whatever is on that content. And somebody normally wouldn't be looking for your services and they see you, right? And the picture of you with the child or you with the drafts yeah. or you with the, you know, environment. And they're gonna go, oh, and now they have something, remember I said, no like a trust factor. Right. And now they've got this different perception of you and now they're more interested in you because they now see you in a different light. Yeah, yeah, right? it's, yeah it also helps. Um, I think that was, ties into the part of the vulnerability of showing people who you are and who your heart, what your heart is. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, yeah. and that that's really an important piece because we are working at the end of the day, human to human. Yes. And yes. so, um, I mean, so if somebody wants to get started um, yeah. and they're really not sure, you know, how can they, mm -hmm. um, how can they, get started in and putting together a social responsibility plan for their their business, no matter how small, yeah. and what really needs to go into that plan. Sure. Absolutely, is you always wanna find a cause that's aligned with your own values, number one, and even more so something that's personally happened to you, right? Something that's happened to you, and it's pretty common is that just like, uh, well, okay, I chose the arts and the youth because my son, who's 30, um, I love, and he's brilliant. He's a smart, smart guy and is doing really well in his life. Um, but I've always had this love of youth leadership and youth empowerment, especially raising my son and so forth. And then the other example of value and, and something that happened to me is that back in 2003, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I had gone through that 
And one of the first things that were recommended to me by some of my healers, I believe in energy, you know, energy healings along with Western medicine is they said, you know, to help with your healing and the compassion, go volunteer for Breast Cancer Foundation. I said, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. <laughs> and within the next day, I called up Susan G. Komen, the LA affiliate, I'm in Los Angeles area. And I began volunteering pretty immediately. And what happened is, and here's the beautiful gift and the challenge, I ended up becoming their speaker chair. And I spoke to audiences large and small, um, attached to my then PR business as one of the you know, causes I supported. And I also served on their board at two terms. And it changed my life because I was literally my, my purpose in attaching myself to that cause because of my own life and challenges is it started to obviously it healed me, but I was helping other women in my platform when I spoke about being proactive about their health. I was incredibly proactive more so than maybe other women because I tend to be kind of strong and independent <laughs> is that I don't take whatever the doctor tells me as word. I yeah. want to make sure what's going on with my body. And this is back in 2003, right? This was yeah. quite a while ago, so 18 years ago, 19, whatever it was. And so my highest recommendation is your values and what has affected, what's been affected profoundly in your own life, right? That you can give back to. And from that, you're not going to operate from the head. You're going to operate from the heart and how you're going to plan it. Yeah. Right? How it's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's brilliant. Uh, and it is that, and that's also stepping once again into your own authentic self and who you are. Yeah. Um, and why then there can be a deep connection with what you're doing. Um, so what questions should our audience ask themselves, um, you mm -hmm. know, and their own companies, yeah. um, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, their brands. So if they were going to step back and they're going to look at this, um, what should they be asking themselves? Well, it, I mean, it goes back to, you know, one, their values. Um, I mean, think about, can you remember your, your, and this is a, a saying I have in personal branding, which I also coach. It used to be, as I said, my lead, um, my lead program. Now it's one of my programs. And I mean, lead, lead program is of course, you know, uh, entrepreneurship. And that, and that is, your personal brand or personal branding is who you are. It's not what you do, right? Personal branding is who you are and the perception yeah. of what, you know, your audience sees. So, you know, the questions you should ask is again, what's important to you, right? What are the gifts you have to give to your audience, to your target market, to humanity? Right. Really look at, in fact, one of my main tenets that I coach is about your genius zone. Yeah. Right. You know, that one um, is what are your what's your genius zone talents? Right. It's also going to be part of the authenticity of your brand. And how can that then be in service to then a nonprofit? Right. Yeah. Because now you have a, a match, if you will, made in heaven, which is you're doing good, you're doing what you love, and it comes from the heart, it comes from a, an authentic place, and then you can reach out to you know, reach out to me, reach out to others, reach out to you. I know you have the two causes, girls who code, and what is it, day for days for girls, right? Is reach out to some of us that have done this and ask questions and how you can apply that to your brand. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think this has been such a wonderful conversation, Marla. I, I think we could go on for quite some time. This is just um, deeply satisfying, you know, talking with you. Uh, and I hope everyone else is getting as much out of it. And I want to thank you so much for sharing how brands can more can be more socially conscious and responsible. And I know, I hope that our listeners are feeling the same way I am and that they want to know where and how they can find out more about you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for 
thank you for having this topic because it's obviously very, you know, it's, it's a very passionate project, uh, topic, I should say, to, to talk about. Yes, I have a, uh, a special page for your listeners and it's marladiane.com forward slash special. And I know you'll have it in the show notes. And in that, it will give you the opportunity. Let's get to know each other. So you have an, an option to fill out a very quick form for just a 30-minute get-to-know-each-other call about this very topic or about anything else we talked about today. Uh, and then I have three free downloads. You can choose one, two, or three. It's up to you. One is um, 10 Fun Ways or I should say 10 fun ideas to um, enhance and feed your creativity. Um, the other is the um, path to higher earning power. And the third one is my top uh, success book recommendations list. So have at it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's uh, really brilliant. Um, and I think that's so helpful because then, especially like with the book list, people have that, you know, every so often I found like this list, I still remember this one list that I found and never could find it again. Oh. <laughs> I, like, I went, I, I went, I should have, you know, I wanted everything on that list and, you know, anyway, um, that's great. That's great. And thank you so much. I mean, this has been such a fabulous discussion, so informative. And I want to remind our audience that if you have ideas that you'd like to share, you can leave us a comment down below. We love hearing from you. And if you have a question, a specific question, or would like to suggest topics for discussion, please email us at join the conversation at petite to queen.com and to stay current on all our insightful advice, our breakthrough advantages and wonderful, wonderful episodes like the one today with Marla, please uh, sign up for our weekly wisdoms newsletter at petite to queen.com. I want to thank everyone who tuned in and who's listening. And Marla, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you. Oh my God, my pleasure and, and a privilege to be here. <laughs>